Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about uh, modeling ensembles and doing so with a carrot package. You don't have to use a carrot package, it just makes things a little easier. Uh, what's an ensemble? Briefly, it's, it means stacking models uh, together. Uh, you can model a data set with one model and you'll have one understanding of your data. But if you um, uh, use different models, especially diverse models that will approach the data differently, then you're going to have a wider understanding of your of your data set, and especially for complex uh, data sets, uh, it will increase your accuracy, well, theoretically, and your stability over your predictions over the long run. Um, the um, using the, the the carrot library is uh, nice in terms of uh, uh, one of the features of, of the carrot is it offers a kind of a unified uh, language with functions and commands that generalized so you can talk to a variety of models using the same constructs and in ensembles that's that's what you need you need to be able to talk to um, to a lot of different models and uh, it saves you on a lot of coding so uh, if you call the get model info function of the carrot library you will um, it will show you a list of all the models that are supported so in theory you can write your script have it go through one a model and just change one variable name and it can go through another model that is that easy uh, it's, it's not that simple because uh, some models are classification only others are regression only and some are dual so depending on what that type of model uh, but if it's if the model works that way with your data then it's very easy to swap them I'm also going to use um, the for to, to the purpose of showing uh, the 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 example the ensemble example. I'm going to use a a data set from um, uh, Hadley Wickham, and I and I'm not going to talk much about it because it's the the, the data set is, is not really relevant to what we're doing here. So I just kind of picked something that we could upload easily, and all this code is going to be on GitHub, and the link will be in the description. So um, don't worry about copying as I uh, explain this. So uh, here uh, I'm going to use the vehicles uh, data set and it basically talks about consumption, energy consumption on a set of different vehicles. Um, and here we just got it back. I'm going to do a few quick transformations on the data just to get it in, a, in the shape that, that we need. Uh, I'm only going to use the first 24 columns. I'm going to force everything to numeric impute and there is a uh, the the column cylinders, the variable cylinders, that I'm going to only going to keep the six cylinder uh, vehicles, and everything else I'm going to turn into a zero, and this is going to be our target variable or our response variable, and we're going to be using the other data, the other variables to predict that. So let's just look at our data quickly, and we see it's our target variable is fairly, you know, it's it's, it's not bad. It's not a rare event. And um, here we can also look at the, the type of um, oops. So here are the, um, the column names. So we're going to use all these columns, all these variables to predict cylinders. It's that simple. Um, we also, in order to set this up, to set this, this ensemble work, we need a little bit more complex uh, set of data sets. Um, here we're going to uh, basically, um, uh, I'm going to shuffle it, take a third of the size of the data set and assign a third of the data to um, ensemble data a third to blender data and a third to testing data. We need three data sets in order to uh, uh, run it the way uh, the way I'm doing it. And as you know, it's very straightforward. We're going to use the ensemble data to train our ensembles, so our various models. And the blender will be used to blend all these probabilities and testing will to see how well we did. I like to um, to use a label name and a predictors variable to hold these variables and what's nice about it doing this way is afterwards your code will be generalizable uh, you can very easily change you know uh, your label name and everything else should work 
So this is going to be the first caret function we call is the train control. Train control works with the train function, you know, the classical train function if you see in, uh, in, uh, in, in model functions in R. And it's, it, instructs, it instructs how you want uh, the train function to, to find the best uh, 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 parameters for your model. So the uh, reason why we, we're, we're telling you to do cross-validated and do it three times and only repeat once is by default it will use bootstrapping and it's going to be a lot slower. So for the sake of this, this uh, example, I wanted to, to find a fast system. So it's basically going to cross-validate um, uh, three times to, fi to, to, to find the best parameters um, for the models that we seek, that we select. And I make sure I need to run it so it's in memory. So now we need to train all the ensemble models. So we're going to use uh, the ensemble data. That was the first data set we created. So basically, we're going to train a GBM model, an R part model, and a tree bag model. Um, this is straightforward caret uh, style uh, uh, function. Um, so as you notice that we're using exact same code to talk to three different models. And we pass the same control. So it will use cross-validated to find the best uh, uh, tuning for tree bag or part GBM, even though they use probably different uh, tuning parameters. Well, they, they do use a tree bag actually they use, uses none. Um, so um, we're going to run this. This takes a little bit of time. So this is this, this is the ensemble stage. So here we are. Uh, we selected three models, and we trained them um, using our data set. And what it's going to give us is the ability to predict another data set. So we're going to use these three models that we trained to then predict uh, our uh, Blender data set and our testing data set. And it'll, it'll make sense in in a second. As soon as it's done, and again we we have a very small uh, data set. This this can take a while um, if your data set is large. It's kind of a while. I mean, overnight or or even longer, depending on how many models you have, what type of uh, tuning you selected, and the size of the data. So here, so now we got our three models back. We got uh, GBM, R part, and tree bag. So now these models are ready to predict something. We've 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 trained them to recognize a vehicle with six cylinders, and now we are going to use each one of our models on our two data sets. So we're going to train uh, the blender data using the GBM, the R part, and the tree bag, and we're also going to uh, use the train. We're also going to predict our testing data using those three um, uh, models. And what we're doing basically is we are, um, and let's take this one as an example, we're saying use uh, our model GBM, which is trained, on our Blender data and return the probabilities back to the Blender data. And do the same thing with the testing data. Train it and return the probabilities of the, of the, not the, the testing data back to the testing data set. So in essence, we're harvesting probabilities, adding them back to uh, the data set on which we predicted. And thus, we have the same data set as we had before, except it's been enhanced with uh, probabilities of different models. So. Uh, Originally, our data set had, you know, so x x amount of, of columns, and if you used a GBM model, well, then it would GBM would be the only one modeling. Now, it's still going to model GBM will still model everything, but it will have the extra um, understanding of the data from different models. So hopefully that was clear. Um, and one thing we can do now, so now we have uh, uh, we have added new columns of probabilities to both our two last data sets. So Blender data and testing data now have three extra columns each. 
So one thing we can do is we can see, for example, actually, you know what? No, let's not do that. Let's run the whole ensemble. And if we have time, we can do that. So now we can use our, um, we have to, our, our last model, so in this case I'm going to use a GBM model to train the blended data. So this is the enhanced blended data with the extra three columns, right? So I'm going to run this. So it's going to take a little longer than the original GBM because it has three extra columns of probabilities. And once that returns, which it just did, we're going to see how we did. So I'm going to predict using the final Blender model that we just trained against the testing data, our third data set, which also has been enhanced with three extra columns. And, and we're going to see how well we did. So we're going to print. Actually, we're going to do it here. There. So we got 0.992. So that's pretty high. So of course you're saying, how would you have done without um, using the the model? And that's a good question. And we can find that out right now. So here we're doing a straight GBM model with our um, uh, Blender data. With that, so in this case, because we're going, we, we're doing this backwards, we have to call back our original data, right? So. It's very simple to do. We are going to, before I do this, we're going to rebuild our original data sets. There we go. And we're going to run on the original data. So this will be the original Blender data. We're going to retrain it using GBM without the three extra uh, columns. And it's not happy undefined. Oh, because we need to re we need to redo the predictors as well. There we go. Because we remove the probability columns out of it. So let's see. So I need to train it again. Okay, it's trained. And now we're going to predict and see how well we did. And look at that. So it may not seem like much, but the model on its own, GBM with the original data, gave us a 0.99. The model with uh, the enhanced uh, probabilities, basically enhanced by adding probabilities from diverse models, gave us a slightly higher uh, a, a area under the curve. Remember, area under the curve. So 0 0.5 is random. One is a perfect prediction. So the, our model already is 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 uh, uh, has a lot of good data in it. I mean, our data set has good data in it. So thus, thus we we easily get a high number. But we managed to increase that by using uh, uh, three models. And you wouldn't have to uh, use GBM. We use GBM and ensemble, and then did it. We use GBM to um, to blend. Uh, the probabilities together. You could use a third model, which might even be better, because as we, you, you know, you're, you you get the benefit of an additional, uh, uh, extra model, um, extra way of analyzing your data. So there you have it. It's a simple way of um, uh, of uh, running ensembles and then blending them together, um, and all the code will be on GitHub. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you.